Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Good morning. Are you guys having a pre-conversation? Yep, yeah, that I hope okay, was heard. not. It was, on, it was definitely on the air. Uh, this is Run It Back Fan. Oh, we TV. went pink tonight. I know. We look yeah. like we talked before Thanks the show. The, which... Well, it kind of works because you're in the middle. Thanks for the bit, bro. Yeah, no one. Okay. This is our final studio show <clears throat> of our second season here of Run It Back, guys. Does look anybody have anything they want to share or? You guys made this so easy oh. for me. I'm a, I'm a media rookie. Chandler, Beetle. I'm an oldie. My boy Shams, wherever you at. Yeah. Scooping everything. He's I appreciate y'all for making this so easy transition from. Oh, we loved having you. This has been an absolute 130 blast. episodes or something? Is that right? That's a lot that of television. Too, that's too many. And we've never been on live television before. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> uh, we, apparently we have to talk a little bit about, there is a game tonight. Whether wow, it's inevitable wow, or not, wow. uh, it's going to happen. So game four, Dallas is favored <clears throat> slightly. A bunch of players spoke yesterday, including Luca, who sat down with Malika Andrews and had some things to say about game three. Kyrie said after the game, you know, what did you say to, to Luca? And he said at this point, you just kind of have to give him a hug and tell him it's okay. But did you feel like you let your teammates down? Yeah, of course. I mean, like I said, you know, it wasn't the smartest thing to do, especially in this situation. It's the finals. Uh, you got to give everything. You know, a little tired out there. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Kyrie's been great for me uh, just having him on here. So what did you say to your teammates afterwards? It's my bad, uh, you know, can't do that, especially in the NBA Finals, you know. Regular season is a little bit different, uh, but can't really do that in the Finals. Yeah. So it's all fine and good, right? Like, you slept on it, you've had a moment. Whenever you react, like, I have road rage. When I react in road rage, <laughs> I don't have, I can't control that. And I feel like that's where he is. So then the next day you're like, that probably wasn't good. So do you believe what he's saying there? Well, yeah, and I love him as the, you know, the face of this franchise, mm. the superstar on this team. He's got to take ownership, and he knows it's unacceptable. He has to be on the floor at the end of games especially. He cannot have tic-tac kind of, you know, silly fouls Chasing. like this that, that, you know, limit your minutes. And, and the Dallas Mavericks are a great team, but that is a lot to do with Luka Doncic. His offense is controlled by him, as good as Kyrie Irving are and these other guys have been. Luka is the engine for this entire team. So you can't have himself in situations. And the early ones that Lou talked about, you can't, you can't those, those, you know, take fouls in the backcourt. He's got to be smarter with those just because he can't put himself in the situation to not be there when the game matters the most. So I love that he took on this ownership, this leadership. Um, and, and, and I think he'll learn from this. And no matter what happens in this series, I think they knew this was a tall task, but, sure. but they still have a shot. You know what I mean? That, that's all they got to be thinking about. But they, they, don't, they don't with him not on the floor. Shut it. It's not over till it's over. Winning a game or? Somebody's going to do it. That's a, Somebody will do it. Somebody's going to do it one day. I don't Maybe. know if it's this year. It's not. I don't think so either. <laughs> But I'm just saying, you can't just pack it in yet. You have the whole like you have. You still have another game to play, so be professional. Own, own up to your your mistakes last game, and see if you can correct them in this yeah. game. Yeah, I respect the, um, the accountability that that he's taken on. You know, and if you're his teammate, and now that the heat of the moment is kind of yeah. down, your adrenaline's wore down, you can kind of take a step back and say, you know what, I messed up. I could have I could have handled that differently. Um, I could have played differently. Some of those little take fouls, I got to handle those things differently. But Again, these are learning experiences. Luca now knows what it takes to get to the top of the hill, and you know he's probably gonna he's probably gonna go down 4-0 or 4-1, something of that nature. But he's gonna take these experiences. He's gonna come back next year and be motivated, and he'll be a better leader for it for everything that he's going through and experiencing um, in his finals. He's gonna have to work on like the the, the zen of it because it's hard to just change how you react to things that's so instantaneous so I don't know how you do that um, good luck but Jason Tatum asked yesterday about this playoff run that his team is having here he is obviously it'd be cool enough to hang an 18th banner I, I get that's the bigger thing but there's never been a Celtic team ever with a better playoff record than what you guys have to this point you guys have a chance to be second all time and I mean, it's like the eight, the 86 team went 82 and 18. You guys could be two games away from that. It's like the second best Celtic team ever in terms of record. How much more would that add to it when you think of all that this franchise has done? You guys could be at the top of a whole lot of lists in that record book. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, that would that would be really cool. Uh, but you know, you guys probably would say we didn't play anybody to get here, so we just have to do it again next year. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. 
it's true. We are going to say that. He's talking uh, to you. No, he's talking to a lot. I mean, there are a lot of us. I'm not the only one that says that. It's not that they didn't play anybody. It's just that the teams they played happen to also have their best players out. And he's spoken past tense like this thing is over. Well, he knows. I... He I, does. <laughs> I love this, first of all, because you know he's listening. You know he's here. And you know as many, as many times as guys say they're off social media, they're not... You still hear it. Your yeah. friends still talk about it. Your family still talks about it. So I like this. And listen... If they were to lose one of those series against one of these teams that were banged up or had their guy missing, yep. then that's one thing to talk shit about it and be like, oh, you know what, they did They handled their business, though. So, we, again, at the end of the day, they still won. Mm. They, they played the hand they were dealt. It's not their fault that these teams were banged up no, and right. injured. They've also been missing Przingis, who showed in game one how valuable he is. But you can't discredit what they've done just because other teams have been hurt. That's part of basketball. It's part of the whole season. It happens every single year. Yes, did it happen more often for them and their path to get here? No doubt. But they still handled, the, handled their business, right. and they still look dominant against a fully healthy Mavericks team. So Absolutely. they're not banged up. Where's their, who's their missing guy? Absolutely. And they're about dominant. to sweep them. Hear it. It's been yeah. a dominant postseason. You know, I said it before the playoffs are going to start. This is probably going to be some of the best basketball that we were going we to witness. And it, it panned out to be that. We didn't think the Phoenix Suns were going to get swept. Look at what um, Oklahoma City was, was able to put together. Look at the run that Dallas put together. Think about what Minnesota was able to do with Denver. All of these storylines and all of, and this is just the Western Conference. This is the West. And in the East, it went a little different. Boston, were, they were the dominant team all year. They showed up in the postseason and they proved it. A lot of teams went through injuries. A lot of teams went through adversity, but so did they. You know, they didn't have Porzingis where, where they can rely on him consistently. And he came in and gave them two great games in these finals. You know what I mean? And so with that, everybody went through something. It was the perfect storm for them. But with the teams that were lined up in front of them, they absolutely dominated everybody. Yeah, was the, the, the path here, yeah, was easier. But look what they're doing to this team the Dallas Mavericks, yeah. look what they did to a tough Western Conference. I know, I mean, exactly. like they dominated their conference, and they looked really, really great and dominant and offensively explosive. And now just look what the Boston Celtics are doing to this team that ran through the Western Conference against really, really good teams that we all thought were more contenders than any of the teams that Boston beat in the East anyways. So I hate the discredit part of the Boston Celtics because I think the expectations were so high this year because we've seen them get there and not get over the hump. They're getting over the hump the now. The hump is so getting they, over. Yeah, they, they, they're over the hump. But the other thing I'll say this, too, is, is 100%, with the exception of the historians of this game or people that perhaps maybe just hate the Celtics, none of us will remember the context of this a couple years from now. It'll just be you guys were champions. And so no. that's the – because it's very hard for the average fan to tell you and rattle off the path. But I do think of because teams. of their path, I don't think, like, Celtics fans are going to be like, oh, this is one of the best Celtics teams I don't ever. think so either. Like, I think they they're – I don't think they're putting team, them right? in the same category as some of those other championship teams in I the mean, past. I mean, if you if – you Sweep the NBA Finals. How can you not? Though? I just don't. Well, if you I, win another one, then you get to start. We start. What's wrong with this one? You, if you <laughs> fall in the finals, listen. I don't care what's going on. If I sweep to get my ring, I am a historic. So are they great better than the 2008 ball. Celtics? Who knows? Did the Do who, which one are you taking? Did, just by just by nostalgia and all of that, you'll take the 2008 team because you'll think about Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen yeah. and Paul Pierce and all of those guys. But did they sweep in the finals? Absolutely not. So you have to that. consider these guys. I know we get caught up in a moment and sometimes we don't really appreciate what's going on because we're living it, we're experiencing it, and so we always do this thing where True. we respect nostalgia before we respect what's going on in the present moment. But if we look back three years from now and it's a game seven next year and it's game seven the year after that and we look at these guys and they do a 4-0 sweep, you got to respect what, what they were able to put together. That's fair, yeah. if we remember it. We might not. Hmm. Um, game two, round two of the silhouette game has fallen upon us. Oh, I can't even remember how the last one ended. Yeah, uh, yeah Lou won, Lou right? Won All right, so then beater. <laughs> Lou's up first on the next Let's one. Go. It's called go. the silhouette game. I'm pretty sure you can figure out uh, what that means. Let's flash one up there. Uh, this is easy. It's oh. J.R. Smith. Ah. J.R. Smith for the win. It looks this so is too funny. Easy. That was a layup. <laughs> that was okay. So you're mad. All right, Lou's mad. got one. I am mad. But Chandler, you might get a good one too. Chandler's up next. That oh, I mean, come is on. Blake Griffin, and those are his nuts on Kendrick Perkins. His <laughs> mouth looks so crazy in this. You can't even like that silhouette was kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, that was one of the sickest dunks of all time. Hey, you know, Blake doesn't come up a lot. No, this one is a challenge. Oh man, that's this a Lou. That's uh, a Lou one. That is a. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> a little too uh, brolic. Man. Oh, that, time up. Oh, time you want to steal? Do you get to steal? Do I? I think this is I don't Anthony Edwards. No, can't be. <laughs> Reggie Jackson. All right, let me see it. Eric Bledsoe. Wow. wow. Okay, I wouldn't have got that one. Upset. All right, we're smart. still tied at one apiece. Chandler. Chandler did not get it. Oh, I know who this is. Oh. Uh -huh. Is this a player? 
I mean, hell? I know who one person is. It's kind of it's kind of tricky too. They kind of ran you hell for this one. Weird face. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to guess. <laughs> I don't look like an alien. Oh, yeah, back on me. Luke, ring, ring the buzzer. Can you steal it? It's took my time. No, I, I was wrong, because they were teammates. I thought this was a core brewer for whatever reason. Could be. No chance it's core. I think it's like a KG. Wow. Mm -hmm. In a bazillion years. Oh, this is tough. to. All right, okay. Conrad took y'all. We got some better ones today, right. Conrad. Uh, Lou's oh, up next. Yeah, that's Steve Nash. Oh, I like this one. He's the only person that's going to pass the ball on a Phoenix Sun. 2-1 Lou. Chandler? I'm not good at this game. Oh, I know him. I know, I know him. It's easy. I Is take it? it? Yeah, I take it if you don't want it. Well, you're gonna take it when I don't get it right. Excuse yeah. Me? That's. <laughs> We're still talking syllables, <laughs> Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Dwayne Wade. No, Kobe no. Bryant. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's Lou, jersey in his mouth. See, uh, That's so bad. Three-one, Lou, and it's back wow, to Lou. I suck at this game. You really do, buddy. That is uh, armband Patrick Ewan. I, I know. I feel like I get I know. like somebody. Damn it. Who's that? I'm with trying that? to guess by the Who's with yes. who has Lose the baggy first. ass armband? I'm gonna go Alonzo Morton against this. That's Patrick Ewan. Akeem Olajuwon. That is Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah, Olajuwon. that's it. All right, that three, two, two and Don't now call it, come Chandler. back. All right, Chandler. That is Akeem Olajuwon. Give me something good, Conrad. Oh, come on. It's too easy. And Chandler's about to struggle with it. Wait, no, are you that's struggling? That's Dwight Howard, but didn't we just see him on one? No, but he was the other person in it. Oh, yeah, Dwight Howard. So, All right, yes. so 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> Dwight Howard, Howard, heavy day, OK. Lou. Let's see what you got This going. is it? Yeah, we got more. Oh, Brogdon. It's a tiny person. He is tiny. <laughs> what in the world? Um, Isaiah Thomas. He's righty, though, isn't he? <gasps> Shaka Khan, Lou. Is that right or right? Is it right? Yeah, show it. Right. Why are you right. showing it? God. Yes. What a fine. So Lou things. wins. That's the last one. Oh, there's a bonus. So it's I can tie bonus. it up. Oh, cut. <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> In real time. <laughs> Damn. Have I don't you, know. Yeah, I'm winless in this Listen, game. Did you lose both? Yes. Wow. I'm just better at this game. Season three, I'll be better. It's cool. Season three. I'll be Season three will be better. Uh, we got to take a quick break. Golly. We'll come back, Chandler. Who we got? Oh, we got my favorite tennis player in the world, Nick Kyrgios. Oh, yes! from Australia. Yeah. This is awesome. We'll be back. Run it back. Woo! Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. That's oh, guys, not gonna lie, this is about to be a cool moment. I'm very excited because Chandler mentioned your favorite tennis player. I. I Happy to be a huge fan myself. Joining us, it's midnight 15 in Australia right now. Nick Kyrgios joins the show. Super, super Celtics fan, Nick Kyrgios, is, is yep. really what I'm loving about this. So number one, I'm assuming you've just been up. Are you a night guy? Um, no, I was gonna go to sleep, but then I, you know, just stayed awake and it's 12, 15, and I'm, I'm just anxious about tomorrow, to be honest. I just want the Celtics to get it done. So the funny thing is, is when you say you're anxious, I was like, oh, what's tomorrow? And then I realized you're anxious for the game. I, I, from what you've yep. seen so far, how could you mm -hmm. still be anxious at this point? Well, I mean, look, I mean, I know, I mean, we had Kyrie Irving for so many years and we all know what he's capable of doing. And I think, you know, everyone's right in saying they're probably the best backcourt ever, you know, offensively for sure. But I was telling all my friends and everyone here, I was like, we've probably the most well-equipped team to deal with the Mavericks, to be honest. Like Derek White and Drew Holiday in the backcourt, like lock anyone down. And I think even that last game, like Kyrie had like 35 or something, but the shots he was hitting were just like ridiculous. And you got to live with that. But if he can do that again in game four, I just need Luca to foul out. <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely on the table that that's going to happen. By the way, random question: Why Celtics? How are you a Celtics fan? Um, 2005, I got my first like NBA game, and I picked the Celtics with Paul Pierce, and then we got the trade for uh, Ray Allen and KG, and I'm just like the biggest diehard Celtics fan ever. And then I did like the podcast with KG and Paul Pierce when I was in LA. And I was like, just these dudes are just my type of people. They're so like, <laughs> they just got no filter. And I was just like, this is the best. We're just sipping tequila, eating chicken wings. Like it was just, yeah. all, it was all happening. Like Paul, Paul Pierce is like my idol. Yeah, he's a crazy person, but it's yeah. like, a, yeah. yeah. It's like <laughs> His takes now too yeah. just keep getting crazier Wait. and crazier. Yeah. But we love Paul Pierce. <laughs> yeah. uh, we yeah. all think it's pretty much a wrap tonight, Nick. Yeah. We think it's going to be a sweep for her. Like you said, the Celtics mm. just match up too well yep. with the Dallas Mavericks. Is this the yep. best Celtics team in your eyes, since you've became, since you've at least become a fan uh, since 2005. Mm. Well, well, I guess like I got a soft spot for like Rondo, Ray Allen, 
Pierce, Garnett, Perkins. I think that that team was like, just like they were defensively different, and they just had like they were a bunch of dogs on that team. But I think this team, they've got no weakness. Like offensively, they they when they move the ball, they just they can score on you any sort of way. And then defensively, they've been incredible. Like I think the Mavericks have even touched a hundred this series. So. I mean, we're winning this series just purely on de- on the defensive end, and we're just finding plays later late, later in the stretch. Like JB's coming up so clutch. I can't believe how much he's grown. You know, obviously, I've seen Tatum and Brown and their development as soon as they came in the league. Like so Brown, I was always a bit iffy about his closing ability in the past, but now, like, I think you can just put it to bed in the sense that he's probably our go-to guy right now. Like, he's been closing our games, I think, better than JT has. Although JT was the only reason we kind of stayed alive last game. I thought in the first half. I thought a blowout was coming in early, and then JT kind of started finding, finding his stroke. So, I don't know. I, I think if the, this team went up against that team, I mean, I don't know. I can't do it to Rondo, man, and Carnet. I think, I think, I think those old guys might get him in seven. Do we had Scott Brini on the show? Didn't he say he thought initially this team yes. would beat them, but then after watching them, he think they could expose them. And that too is many tough. Dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But now, fuck you. You sweep the finals. <laughs> Well, that's something yeah, to argue. It's something. Nick, you kind of alluded true. to it, but do, right now, do you have JB as, as your finals MVP? I mean, look, I think if you just purely go on numbers and I think Clay's down the stretch, like, I mean, I've been watching, bro, I'm a massive fan, by the way, like, you're like an idol to so many of my friends, like, <laughs> Lou Will, bro, your reputation comes all the way to Australia, don't worry about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, like, I mean, in on the finals, this, I mean, this is the biggest stage, and I think, like, you look at the player that's, continues to answer the call late, later in the, in those clutch moments. J- Jalen Brown's been, I think ever since he got snubbed from All-NBA team, like the fact that he didn't make any team is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. Um, not even any Celtic bias. I just think he deserved to be on one of those teams. Um, he's just been like locked in ever since then. Like you could just tell that's been driving him. And I think right now I'd probably have him as final MVP. Although I do want Tatum to get it because I know if they win it and Tatum doesn't get it, Tatum's <laughs> never going to get his flowers. And I want him to get his flowers. Like he gets so much hate for like no reason, I yeah. think, in my opinion. So the media, they've tried to make these narratives that JB and JT, they don't like each other, which guy is better than the other. What do, what do you think when you hear those narratives? Ridiculous, man. Like, I think like, like when Jalen Brown won the Eastern Conference, um, like MVP, Tatum was like clapping, smiling, like, what do you, I don't understand, what do you want him to do? Like jump on Jalen Brown's back at the, at, at, this, at the end of the game? I don't know, I, like, I've got, like, I can't even speak to some of my friends that are, like, they were, remember when they were, like, split JT and JB up, like, it's never going to work. Like, I actually cut those people out from my life because I was, like, I told you <laughs> this, like, you got to be patient, bro. Like, and I think, I, I remember Kyrie even saying it, like, when Kyrie was on the Celtics, like, these guys were only, like, 20, 21 years old. Like, they were coming into the league, and I was, like, got to let these guys mature a little bit because you could see their potential, and now... I don't know, man. Like they look good. This, if they win this year, I think we could do it. We could do a three feet. Mm. There could be a few. And by the way, that's a big sign too, is that they're patient in Boston. Not a lot of teams have that, where they just let it simmer. Mm. Um, I think you're the perfect person to ask about Luca uh, and his mm. ejection and the t- everything that he does. Because you're a fiery player too, Nick. Um, and that's why people <laughs> yeah. love you. So your opinion when you see Luca, for example, get himself mm. thrown out of a game for fouling out in such an important moment with four minutes left. What yeah. are you thinking? I mean, yeah, it was obviously a, a bad decision by him. Like, he got five fouls, you're taking a charge on the three-point line. And when I saw it, I was cheering. Like, I was on my knees saying, get him out of here. I was like, throw him out, get him out. <laughs> and then people that are saying, like, the ref sold the game and all this, I'm like, bro, it's clearly a blocking foul. Like, there's no way that's going to get overturned. But, I mean, look, the Mavs wouldn't be here without Luca. Like, let's just give him his flowers, like probably the best offensive player in the league, hands down. Like he makes people look so silly in the post, hits ridiculous threes, like playmaking ability for sure. But I think the Celtics are definitely exposing him on the defensive end, like the amount of blow bys, Drew Holiday's getting past, Tatum, and then just they're, making, they're getting some open shots off, like no rotation from Luca. Like I love it, but at the same time, I think that's one expert, like aspect of his game he needs to improve if you know this Mavs team is going to probably go the next step for sure. And, like, he's probably gassed as well, like, late in the fourth, yeah. guarding Jalen Brown. Like, it's probably not an easy task. Nick, there was a video last year of you burning a Celtics jersey <laughs> after they lost the Miami Heat in Game 7. Yeah, uh, yeah. you have to bring that up, man. Don't do it. 
it. No. First of all, what would you do if they smoked four in a row here? And they, and they lost uh. If you put the jersey in this, what would you do if they happened to smoke this finals? And what would end the whole the, this whole situation right no, here? No, it's celebrant. Look at the emotions. He was What's heartbroken. Happening? He was heartbroken. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. We all have our moments, Nick. We all have our moments. Man, he was heartbroken. You see the emojis? Yeah. See the emojis. Were you, you were you were devastated? Like you were you were pissed off. You were set. All all the emotions. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, last year was crazy though. Like we got, we would, we came back from three zero down. I was like, okay, we're going home for sure. We're going to the NBA finals. Then we got blown out, and I was like, halfway through the game, I was like, no, nah, I'm done with this franchise. Like I can't follow them anymore. <laughs> tweeting about Grant Williams, tweeting about Marcus Smart, just like absolutely giving it to my team. And then, I mean, look, if if the Mavericks somehow, I'm not even going to talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want to speak it into existence at all. Like I'm mm. sorry, guys. I'm not going to. I think we're Smart. just going to take this game, sweep them, and then. Yeah. Let's, let's worry about don't it. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. God, don't, jinx, that, don't jinx it. This would be a historic moment. Um, you mentioned the fact that the game airs at, what, 1030 your time? Just have to yep. do the math here. So then you have the rest of your day. So if, have the mm -hmm. Celtics ever had a loss or a moment or if this game for some reason yeah. was a loss, does that affect the rest of your day? Yeah, yeah. There's some. There's been some times where I've, like, <laughs> Lot, like Celts have lost in like OT or double OT and I've just like I don't even feel like going out on the tennis court and I lose and <laughs> there's actually there's actually a bit of a reputation like if the C's are playing and like I'm watching like it affects my mood on court they're like oh you lost you like if they win though then that's probably when I play my best tennis not gonna lie <laughs> that's, that's amazing noted. Nick noted. I, can't, Real I can't help but notice um your artwork in the back your, your tribute yeah it's crazy to, oh, sorry, tribute sorry. to I'll be yeah, man, yeah, that's a, man. Yeah, that's an amazing painting. I wanted, I wanted to ask on, on, on the basis of that, who's your, who's your favorite NBA player of all time? I can imagine that it could be one of your guys in green, a KG or somebody like yeah. that. But I, I wanted to know who's your favorite player of all time. Ooh. Um, I got a few. Like I used to watch, I used to love T Mac, but um, I played basketball growing up, and obviously, obviously before Kobe passed, like I hated the Lakers like he I used to watch him just score multiple baskets on all of our players I was like dude this guy does like he's just too good and I still remember that day when he passed it was like I was playing fourth round of the Australian Open actually walked out in his Kobe jersey um you know and I've got a tattoo of Kobe as well my whole right arm is basically covered with um you know some of the greats of all time Braun Kobe um but my probably my favorite of all time though um it's a tough question, bro. I'd probably I'd probably say like Pierce or Rondo. I, I like the fact that Rondo won in in the Lakers and in the Celts as well. I think that's one of the coolest things ever. So probably have to go Rondo. Oh, that's what's up. I like that. Nick, we like to we like yeah, to Rondo. We, we like to compare sports too and figures. So if there was a comparison, who would the Nick Kyrgios of the NBA? Tobias be? Harris. I play like Tobias Harris. I play Tobias, like Tobias Harris. Harris. Like oh. in his prime though. What? Like. When he was, when he was not like this playoff, Tobias Harris. This is not Harris. what I saw coming. No, 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 no. I play with, I play with Tobias. No, Tobias Harris has game. He's the Tobias that got the money. Like that Tobias. Orlando, like Orlando Tobias right. Harris, and like when he got to like Detroit, he played for Detroit, didn't he? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he played for Detroit. in Detroit. When he played there, he was he was giving you buckets, like good mid range, can step back into three at elite level, pretty good defender. That's I feel like I'm Tobias Harris. I didn't hear that yeah. coming. Did but not. That's what's up. You could have given me a thousand yeah. guesses. No. I don't think I would have gotten that one. I was thinking more personality wise. Me too. I was thinking more, you know. Like, uh, it's, and it's damn sure. It's damn sure not Tobias no. Harris. Someone personality spicy. wise, like I really do like Draymond. I'm not gonna lie. There, no, there we go. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. That's more what we were thinking was gonna happen. <laughs> that makes sense to me now. Um, all right, look, we all have players we can't stand. You, you've tweeted about a, a few, so I'm wondering, are there players you like just cannot stand? Um. You could say it's the same space. Who's that one guy that used to be on the Celtics? <laughs> he's then he got he's traded for the Mavs. Now he's in Charlotte. You know what's oh, funny what's though is we had Grant Williams on the show this week, and all I could think about no, was like, I, I like, I like Grant. I like Grant. I just, <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. 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 There's two sides. I really like Pat Bev, like, a lot of the time. His competitiveness is, like, I love that. But when, like, we're playing against him, I just there's something about him, man, that I just can't, like, oh, he's just, like, does it too small. And I just don't like people that really pester LeBron too much. Like, I think just I love LeBron, like, and I just feel like Dylan Brooks and these guys that try and act like they talk like they're on the same level, I'm like, bro, you, you're just not. You're just not. You know what I mean? I can't do guys like that. 
Pat, he, would, Pat yeah. would take that as a compliment. Right? Pat's like, Pat, he would Pat's take that as a compliment. That's what I know, but I know he would. I know he would. He's one of the guys that you hate when he's not on your team. Right. Which like is a dream, too. Yeah, he pisses you off, but you want him on your team. Same with Dylan. Yeah, I agree. Uh, have you come across another athlete or an NBA player? Like, I played tennis, not very good. I played with Grigor one time. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, it, there's so yep. many levels. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Have you come across an athlete or an NBA player that's actually pretty solid at tennis? Or they're all... Yeah, Gordon Haywood. Gordon, Gordon Haywood. Haywood solid. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. He, he, he played tennis growing up at college, I'm pretty sure. So huh. we actually linked up in Miami, watched one of my matches, and we had a hit beforehand. He's, he's pretty good. Wow. Gordon he's pretty Hayward. Good. And you, have you dabbled yeah. in the pickleball yet, or you earned no chance? Yeah, no, I, I play pickle uh, every Wednesday in my hometown. I play here, and I've, I'm part owner in the Miami Pickleball Club as oh, well. Cool. So. Yeah, it's it's, wanna... it's growing over there. You guys love it over there. Oh, dude, we love. I'm part owner it. in the Dallas team. It's it, dude, it's on fire. The only talks about is pickleball. I'm gonna, yeah, I play all the time. Yep. Gotta get Leah. I, Lee, I just called you Lee. Don't worry uh, about it. You know, it's, it's our last, last day. day. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. JJ Barea said he's really good at pickleball. He did say that, and you took it personally, which I found interesting. <laughs> um, I feel like David. I feel like David Lee should be pretty good at it. He, David he Lee dates, should be. Oh, um, he used to play tennis. He's too. married a tennis player, so I feel Great like he probably play the same tennis. Oh. So. Something he must have. Played. Yeah. Wait, this last question I just now saw. Yeah, this, this last question I'm ready for. <clears throat> Nick, you recently joined OnlyFans. <laughs> Please yep. take us through what that means exactly. Well, you're going to have to subscribe and come and look. Come on! You're going to have to pay the is piper. It, is it feet pics? Like, what am I looking yeah, at here? Yeah, it's feet pics, Michelle. <laughs> no, it's... it's... <laughs> no, it's just like... It's exclusive it's a lot content. Of, like, content. It's just exclusive content. It is. It's Brilliant. exclusive content. But That's it. No, it's like... They're, they're trying to get more athletes on there, and um, it's actually been a lot of fun. It really has been. Like, obviously, it's been pretty chaotic and stuff, but <laughs> it's been really good to give people, like, an insight of, like, I think my daily routine and some of the things I do off the court. Like, look, if Lou Will had an OnlyFans, you oh, best believe man. I'd be his biggest subscriber. Well, my wheels are spinning. I'm it, like, yeah. I, I think I'm in. I, I think, think you I, should be That's in. what I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> I want, I want, <laughs> when you hit the night shift, I'm, that's what I'm going to be subscribing, <laughs> but... Dude, you should do this, Lou. It's like a, Whitney Cummings did a whole comedy thing on it. It's like, it's, it's, it's not a it's bad expanding. idea. I don't, I don't need much convincing. Trust no, we'll see you're already I don't done. need much convincing. Nick, tell us about your uh, yeah. your podcast before we let you go. It's it's good good trouble is what it's called. Tell us yeah. about it. Yeah, so uh, season one just finished. I had ten episodes, and man, it was pretty surreal for me. Like a kid from Canberra, Australia, and and to start Good Trouble, I had you know Mike Tyson, Gordon Ramsay. Um, Jay Shetty, some of these amazing play, uh, like people, and like I'm season two. Garnett's gonna come on, which will be super exciting okay. as well. But man, it's been real surreal, like having these people sit down and listen to questions that I've asked them. Like it's all like imposter syndrome for me. So even to be here, like I'm a massive NBA fan, bro. I've seen you guys play, and mad respect for you guys. But yeah, good trouble is gonna be good. I'd like to have. You guys, if you want to come on, it's going to be a lot of fun. To. It'll, It'll be, be, be an honor. We'll come on together. Talk yeah. Shit. <gasps> you yeah, have to. Sick. Good trouble a good name. Nick, this has been an absolute yeah. joy. We appreciate it, man. I know it's a crazy time. Well, it. Best of luck to of morning time. Yes, the game's sir. going to be great. Have a yep. good breakfast. Enjoy yep. it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, Nick. <laughs> we appreciate it. Up the seas. Up the seas. <laughs> I mean, they're going to sweep. It's kind of insane, isn't it? Like that's where we are. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Andrew Nemhard joins the show. Oh, there he is. Woohoo! We'll be right back. I knock them all down like, what's up next? Andrew Nemhard. Nemhard knocks the three down. Damn! Knock him down like, what's up next? Hey. Shots just wrapped up season two with the Pacers. Joining us from a parking lot near you. Are you safe in this parking lot? I don't want to worry about you, Andrew. Yeah, Look, keep, keep going. Going. I just keep got your, out this workout. So no, keep I your head on a swivel. <laughs> Crazy times out there. Uh, Andrew Nemhart joins the show. Obviously, yeah, like this, the season was a blast to watch, and I know it's not exactly how you probably would have preferred it to end, but take us through sort of how it was, Eastern Conference Finals, lessons learned, things that you took away from it. Yeah, I think it was a it was a great run for us. We had a super young team, so there was a lot of lessons learned. It was a lot of our first times, and it was just experience. I think the the biggest thing for us to to keep going forward is get that experience. And um, I think it grew a lot of our confidence getting some wins. And um, as the playoffs got on, we just grew more close as a team. So when you guys wrap things up that last day before you kind of have to see each other again, however long from, it, was there just such a positive energy about the future of what this team looks like? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I think we exceeded our, even our own expectations. And um, I think the front office is happy with everything, where everything's going. I think we just need to all continue to get better and, and continue to have, 
to grow that continuity. Um, I think that would be the biggest thing for a young team going forward. Yeah, Andrew, you personally had an unbelievable series against the Celtics. Super proud and see of how far you've come from when I first met you in Florida to now <laughs> dropping 32 points in game three. And Jalen Brown says some of these guys turned into fucking Michael <laughs> Jordan. What, what do you think about when you, when you hear him say that? I think he was talking about TJ. For real, but, uh, um, I, I mean, I mean, he was guarding me, so I guess I turned into Michael Jordan when he guarded me. <laughs> and um, yeah, you guys are one of the few teams that had success against the Celtics this season. Gave them all they can handle. Uh, if you guys were fully healthy, obviously it's hard to tell. We'll never know. But do you think that series obviously plays out a lot differently? Yeah, I mean, I think I think two to three of the games we had, we were real close, and we had a really good chance of winning. I think we had a tie in the last couple of games. It definitely helps us. But I don't want to put any excuses to it. They beat us. They're a tough team. I think we need to keep getting better if we want to compete with those types of teams going forward. Tell Rick to foul when we're up three next. <laughs> and don't even take luck out of it, for God's sakes. We honestly tried to. We were, the, the plan, like, most of those times was to foul, and we didn't execute across the time. Mm. Damn it, Andrew. It's a crazy shot, though. Yeah. Good shot. Andrew, where, where are you on this this whole Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown debate? Who's the best Celtic? I just I wanted to get your opinion on it. Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, I think they're both good. I think they're they're both different. I think. Um, I don't, don't want to really pick a side. Nah, on this one. I say, uh, yeah, I say, say Jalen Brown. I go Jalen Brown. For really? me personally, I go to both of them. Same right, You said it now. Have you, are you surprised that the, the finals have been so one-sided with, with them just dominating like that? I mean, I think that they've been pretty dominant throughout the year. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I think um, the fact that they have all five guys that can really play make off the dribble and, and, create, and play off the advantage and keep making the advantage even grow, is they're, they're a tough team to beat. I mean, I think we could have got a couple wins, but, I mean, everybody could say they could have done this, could have done that, so... Um, I think I think injuries plays a little role. I think the, the healthy team, when when you get deep in the, in the playoffs, is is big too, and they're pretty healthy. You've hit some pretty big shots along your career, but this one, and if you're Knicks fans, turn away now. Game three, mm. here we go. This is just a a dagger. <laughs> Take us through that. Oh. Yeah, I mean that game. I was I was playing one of my worst games of the playoffs, honestly. So. Uh, I'm glad. I was really happy when that when that shot went down. And we're we're down two going into the game. It was getting tight. I think we we're down like almost eight with like a few minutes left, maybe two, three. So we we made that comeback, and that shot was huge to just extend that series and keep keep it going for us. What were the mentions like with them crazy ass <laughs> Nick fans? Actually, are they just unruly, or do they throw do they show love? Like, what what was the social media like after that? Oof. Ever since ever since the beginning of that series, the social media was crazy with the Nick fans. But it was fun, though. That was one of the most enjoyable times playing in Madison Square Garden against those fans, for sure. Yeah, I never played in Madison Square Garden in the playoffs. Was that the craziest environment playing at MSG in the playoffs that you've ever played in? No doubt, no doubt. I think um, the fans were just chirping on the sideline the whole game. It was it was high-paced basketball, you know. Just the environment, the feel of, like, MSG, even when it wasn't in the playoffs, has always been one of my favorite, favorite places to play, so... Um, did, it was just, it was, a, it was a moment you dream of when you're younger. Did sure. you have like any actual interaction with a celebrity or someone that was just talking to that you actually chirped back to, or was it all pretty much just casual fans talking shit? I was, yeah, chirping some casual fans. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Look, you and Tyrese, man, y'all made a hell of a backcourt uh, these past two seasons. The court vision, the way you guys can make plays together. What has it been like for the last couple years just being able to share the court with him? Yeah, it's been nice. It's been nice. I think, I mean, I, I played a lot of point going into into the league. So I think watching him, watching guys like TJ McConnell just, just gave me kind of the, like a pathway to kind of follow a little bit in terms of how they get stuff done. And um, playing with him is super easy. He likes to get off the ball. He likes to make others better. He likes to have man the ball, play fast. Um, and I think I can do the same. I think I get it back to him. So I think we have a good kind of connection out there where we're both just trying to make plays for the team and, and Whatever happens, happens. Hell yeah. Look, we, we got a segment on this show called mm. Fitter Brick, and Tyrese has been on there quite <laughs> often. And we don't like a lot of the outfits. I got to ask you, check these out. Dear God. Does he have a stylist, dog? You Dear got the tip. Look, Ain't at no this. way he paying somebody to put these outfits on him, dog. The case is cool. 
Look, that I was smooth though. Smooth I like this. One. This was smooth right here. Yeah, a couple of nice ones I like for sure. Oh no, that's, 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 that's outrageous. That's like Bobby Brown. That's not. Nope. The bag. He's got great bags. That's, that's, the accessory game is pretty legit. There's one that. Oh wait. Who's oh, the, we didn't have the, the one. Who's the? You know, because every team has the resident hater. When y'all walk <laughs> in and y'all y'all down to the who's the who's the resident hater in the locker room for the fix? I feel like there's so much hating going on, like it just died off. Like he got one. <laughs> and he doesn't care. Yeah, he don't care. Bro. He's setting his own, he's having his own brand. I feel it's, it's cool. I mean, it I is there are choices being made. This is uh this is a fact. <laughs> Let me ask you about the two voices thing, because that obviously has since gone viral multiple times. Uh, every time I see it still, I'm just taken aback. It, are you used to it by now? Is there rhyme or reason when Ooh, the voices yeah, switch? Two voices. Halliburton's, Halliburton's got two voices. Two different voices. He'll be in the middle of an answer and it'll switch into another voice. Okay. It's uh, kind of cool. <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I didn't even notice it until everybody started talking about it. I wasn't even taking it in like that for real, but. I mean, I, I have noticed it for sure. I, I think it's just natural. You can't, you can't stop it at this point. It's crazy. That's wild as hell. Yeah, I'll, show, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a clip. They're legitimately oh, two different that. voices. That's wild. Yep. Andrew, let's talk a little women's hoops here. You and your teammates recently went to a fever game. Caitlin Clark dropped 30. What's, what are your thoughts on just her impact so far on what she's done for, for the women's game? Um, I think it's been nice. It's been, it's been good to get more eyes on the game. I think I've been, I've been actually kind of tuned in the last couple of years, and I think the talent in the, in the in the WNBA with how little teams and how like many many roster spots they got is just it's just elevated. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a super talented league, and I think she's doing great things, bringing eyeballs to it. And I think she can hoop on top of it, so it's it's fun to watch. Yeah, she can hoop, she can shoot the ball, she can pass the ball. Is she is she one of those talents that she, can she become the best player in the WNBA one day? Like is, she's that good? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. I think she can shoot the three ball really, really good. So that, that makes you tough to guard. People have to kind of change how they scheme you and guard real tight and allow her to get into the paint and make plays. She can, she can do a little bit of everything. Um, she's been a star all, all the way growing up, so I don't see why not. KD was, um, KD was your, your favorite player growing up. I got to ask, mm -hmm. what, was, what was that like for the first time? Competing against him, did you trash talk him any? Did you kind of look up to him, show him that love? What's, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, um, the first time we played, first couple of times we played him, he was killing us. It was him and Kyrie, and they were just taking turns on us, and just it was it was a fun fun thing to watch. I'm not gonna lie, I was on the bench a little bit more, so I was just taking it in. But um, first time I said what's up to him was this past season. I said what's up at the Suns game, and. Um, I mean, I had a little bit of better game if I want to go say what's up after that game. <laughs> <laughs> now, you wore KDs in your rookie year against KD. Nobody told you the laws, can't man. Do you it. Can't, Cardinal you can't sin. Nah. Shoes. Cardinal sin. You, you can't wear shoes that. when you play against them. You got to find <laughs> something else when you play against them. After that, it's cool. But that game, you can't That's do that. You can't That's do it. It's a, it's a law, bro. They got to change. I know, I, I know the law. I, I ain't going to do that. Come on. <laughs> you don't, wait, so you didn't wear them? No, I don't think so. I need to see this picture, man. We got to show, <laughs> show you. I got to take your word for it because I had to ask the question. Mm -hmm. But you know the laws, man. We can't, we can't run mm -hmm. that. You got to believe him. You know, he knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he, knows he know better than me. Do you do anything fun in the offseason? I mean, I know you said you just got out of a workout, but like trips, vacations, have you already done it? What does it look like for you? Yeah, I just actually got back from Greece a couple of days ago. There we go. One of my old teammates from college, um, and we just kind of visited, see the beach. Um, had some fun, just relaxed for real. But um, I'm back in Toronto, um, trying to get ready to to play in the Olympics this summer. We got a training camp in a couple of weeks, so I'm just kind of taking it easy, starting back up to the workouts, you know. How's that? But the Canadian team's got they're, they're, they're kind of sneaky. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. what are we thinking? What is it going to look like? He think, think go. Of I course, mean, he think go. He he better not say nothing different. I, I, yeah, I think we I think we, we got a chance for goal for sure. It's one game. I, I, these guys are these guys got a nice roster at USA, but I mean it's one game. It's not a series or nothing like that. They got to beat us that one time. So and everybody can't shoot the ball. Everybody can't score. So I think we got a competitive, young, hungry roster. And, and what? And what about your what about your expectations for the Pacers in your role? Obviously, you just had such a big playoff. Like, do you even go in with higher expectations next year? Do you have bigger goals? What's that look like? Yeah, honestly, I try to never really do the expectations mm -hmm. thing. Like, I just try to keep getting better, understand what 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 has made me get good to this point, understand what what do I need to, to improve on. I think I can always impact the game on both sides of the floor, 
And whatever the team needs me to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to excel in that role and it's gonna take me to wherever it's gonna take me. Andrew, this has been an absolute pleasure. We appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy the off season, have fun in Paris. Good Thank luck, you so much. Buddy. Yeah, good luck. Listen, Thank you, y'all. We'll be back. Appreciate it. Run it back, yeah. Run it over. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Standing by. Standing by. Say what? Uh, this first one, guys, is a Draymond say Green. What? Say what? Uh, Draymond Green's first one here said he was embarrassed to be around the Warriors when uh, Jordan Poole was still on the team, and that is why he was probably late last season twenty times or so. What, what did I just say? I don't even know that that makes sense. So he's blaming his irresponsibility and tardiness on Jordan Poole's presence? Yeah, if anything, I would think it'd be the opposite. I would think he would come early, he would try and gain that trust and respect back from his teammates and not kind of go the other way and be late. So I don't really understand how these things go hand in hand. Uh, so I know what So I, is the therapy so, working? Are you asking me if I'm buying it, it or just like say what? I don't think the therapy is getting... I ain't buying it. Getting, I, I, just I, to say what? Say what? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, fine. Well, like, I just, I don't know why, why would he even say that? Like, it's like, Because the therapy's not working. Therapist, yeah, therapy doesn't... is all about accountability and like taking it. And I, I don't think he's getting that yet. Yeah, I just I just don't know how these things are correlated, but. He did also say that the Warriors still have a small window to make things happen. Do we buy that? I'm a firm believer. If you have Steph Curry, the window okay. is still slightly okay. cracked. You got to put some pieces around them, though. You still got an opportunity. Yeah. Um, but you got to put some pieces around them. Their window is closing, though. They've been at the top for a long time. Obviously, you can see there's a changing of the guard. There's some teams that are getting readied up. And a lot of those teams, they birthed because you had to build teams in order to beat the Golden State Warriors and the, and the teams that they were able to put together. And so I think that that window is closing. He's right about that. But anytime you have a Steph Curry and you have these guys and you put great pieces around them, they're right back in the conversation what if, Thompson if, you, if you do it right. Does that change the it, window at all? Yeah, it depends who they get or who can they get, can they get off Andrew Wiggins. But the point is also it's not just their personnel and their team. It's how good these other teams in the Western Conference are. It's how good the bad teams this year are going to be better next year. So it's, it's, it's going to be – I don't know what, what their moves are going to make, but they have a lot of decisions to make and a lot of moves to be made to actually be a contender next year. So many moves. But you have Steph Curry, so. You do have Steph Curry. Uh, Lou, Trevor Ariza said that James Harden's the best scorer he has played with. Uh, problem is he also played with Kobe. You know. That's his opinion. How dare you accept his opinion, just <laughs> I mean, face that's, value? That's, that's, his, that's his opinion. I play with James. I play with Kobe. I also play with Allen Iverson. You mm. know, my, my personal would be Allen Iverson. It probably, mine wouldn't probably be Kobe either. Wow, so, okay. You know, that's Trevor's opinion. And, you know, he won, a, he won a championship with Kobe, and he's seen different things. So, obviously, his opinion holds some weight when he feels like that. I will say, I played with James Harden for two years as well, and... He's unbelievable. Like the way he can score, the way he creates, the attention he draws, and I he he would make the game easier for me too. So not only was he a great scorer, the things he could do with the ball, his step back, and this is when they'd actually give him the foul calls on the <laughs> on the rip through, so he was even harder to guard. But yeah, I had my best year statistically, even scoring okay. average, playing with James Harden. So not only did he get bucket, he creates so much attention that I had so many wide open looks where I loved playing with James Harden. He we was an know. absolute bucket. Daryl Morey said one time he's the best scorer of all time. I think when he was GM. For when the they Rockets. were friends, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he didn't call him before Ask he called him, before he called him a liar, <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> but he is overseas. a liar. But James Harden <laughs> says he's a liar. So what are we supposed to believe? I, exactly. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> um, Chandler, a fan tweeted that KD can only redeem his legacy if he returns to the Thunder, wins them their first ever championship. He replied, as he does, uh, "You ain't God. Go get ready for work." <laughs> do you agree? With that? I, I, yeah, I agree with KD. And like, fuck this fan. Like, who are you to say like what Kevin Durant? A guy who has more talent in his pinky than you do in your entire Whoa. body. You couldn't even imagine walking a day in his shoes. Like, shut up. Like, go Kevin, get ready. Go get ready for work. work. Like, is such a it's sick so burn. Good. It's <laughs> so. Good. It's like the Jalen Brunson thing the other day. Someone said, "How's Kid Coon?" He wrote Monaco. Fantastic. Like that. Just you know what? Bravo. I love it. If it you want to talk shit and be a, it. a Twitter I'm troll, say, all is fair. And yeah. Water. I you used to say, you "Don't a conversation, engage." You better be ready to. Have. Some of us are a little. Oh no. A chirp every once in a while is pretty great. And KD doing it now. Remember, because he had the burner for a minute where I was like, don't have a burner, just be you. Like, it's funny. He's funny when he comes back at fans. <laughs> yeah, I, the good clap back where it's just just, just humble God. pie for this fan. <laughs> Literally. It also made that fan's life. Oh, yeah. I mean, all, by honest. the way, I, that's I, all I he wanted. he was pinned on his page. I bet you it's in yeah, his oh, profile. It's a like poster, <laughs> a t-shirt. Katie clap back at me. Yeah, uh, Lou, but, Tim Hardaway Sr. Wow. So the Celtics play better without Kristaps Porzingis. It don't matter. <laughs> so, all right. So, since since that statement has been made, we've watched him play with him. We've watched we him have. play without him. 
It don't matter. <laughs> Big Literally time the wins. same result. It it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna respectfully disagree with the OG. Um, but Bring I see what you try to do there. I see what you. Uh, hey, y'all Dallas Mavericks people, man. Y'all trying every mm -hmm. angle to I get try it. to muddy the waters a little bit. It's not working. So is it weird that senior talks so much, but juniors had such a bizarre presence in these games, well, you, if you at got, all? Well, senior is, well, senior is an entity of his own. I agree. And what really is junior going to say right now when he's yeah, having senior, the series? He's would you be like, Dad, please stop talking? You can't because Dad is Tim Hardaway Senior. Know, it ain't like he's up. just he's not just Tim Hardaway Junior's dad. He's also Tim Hardaway. and also Przingis. So he's had, gonna, he has a platform where he's right. going to have an opinion. Przingis has had such an up and down career, but he's, he's been unbelievable when he's been on the floor for the Celtics, and they are so much better when yeah. he plays. He gives them a threat offensively that they don't have without him in the lineup. So That's I, a creepy picture to use. I couldn't with. disagree with this more. I don't love it. You know what yeah. it reminds me of in that picture? Michael Rappaport from Higher Learning. Great movie. Not a great character uh, great to, to want to look like. Um, Chandler, KG said Luca. Hmm, Luca will be the only one to catch LeBron's scoring record. That's a... That's a big, I'm that's not a big buying mountain. this either, but I it's, it's, it's I'm not buying it just because first of all it's so early. There's so many so much young so much. talent. The long he didn't Jeff. say it. He didn't say it like he really meant it. He was just trying to do the math on it and saying how young Luca was and what he's averaging. But like he if just, he keeps this up for like 15, if he could. 20 more he said years. it in jest. It wasn't like well, a, a serious. Again, the, the longevity of Luca's career. If he can do this, average this many points for you know the next 15, 20 years. Yeah, fine. But like it's it's again this is another one of those hypothetes that. Hypothetical. We'll just have to wait and see. But there's so much talent, so much young kids coming in the league at such a young age now that are so good and get an opportunity right away. There's going to be a cat. Could be Wemby. Scoring the rock. Which yeah, is crazy. Be someone young, young. But is Wemby going to play 20 years? I wouldn't think so. Yeah, so he's not going to do it. Yeah. Gotta, gonna is Luca going to play 20 years? Is that body going to, like, you know what I mean? Like a, Does he want to play That's 20? right. So it's an impossible argument. That's fair. No, I, on, I get trying to figure it out. Don't go at your bestie like that. Talk about his My boy. We talked, we talked <laughs> last night. Him. We have to Did you talk him down no, off? Okay. I'm just All right, kidding. Fair we didn't talk about uh, Rashawn McCants, Lou, says he respects Reggie Miller's legacy over LeBron's. <laughs> Said it because LeBron's always had more pieces around him than Reggie. What is going on? This could world? be the most ridiculous take I've ever heard of. Wow. About. Nah, I ain't doing this. McCants has some crazy words. I'm not going to lie. That's what he's... He says what, crazy stuff. doesn't even make sense. That's what he's there for. <laughs> he's he's there to say something. I love Reggie Miller, but... That's some crazy what? shit. Bruh. Say, Rashad. Come say on, what? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Like, for real. We love Reggie Miller. No, come on, but it's... LeBron? I mean, Even Reggie Miller would kind of be like, I don't know about this. I'm a hater, and I know that's ridiculous. Reggie did Come passively on. aggressive Come talk on. shit about Look, LeBron. Look, Rashad year. sat there, he said, <laughs> hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I, and he knew the attention it was going to bring. Clicky baits. And he stood on it, but he'd know better than that. Guys, we have less than a minute left. Last studio show of the season. Anybody oh. want to share anything? Off-season plan? First of all, your life is an off-season plan. So, Lou, um, are you going to do anything fabulous? AAU basketball is about to Love heat up that. again. Mm. I, I'm excited to get back home and get back in the gym. And Only fans. With my girls. I'm not going to mention that. Only fans while I'm talking about my <laughs> youth basketball. It doesn't have to be sex stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah but, it does. All right. Yeah, it does. Nick's isn't. Nick's is. OK, I'm done with <laughs> So I'm signing up for Only fans this Dude. summer. Subscribe I see now. It. Subscribe now. Uh, Guys. Lemon Pepper's Place is what my page yeah. would be called. Oh. He could be doing that oh. with Jokic, hey. living his best life. You know what's great, so you just know he's get absolutely off. fucking get hammered off. in this. <laughs> I get love That ain't so, he is By not way, sober. Tell me again uh. about how Jokic is boring. Uh. Nice try, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he would never do this in, like, Miami. Yeah. Why would he want to do it in Miami? I don't know, but he looks like he's having the time of his life. He's doing it in the best place where he loves life. Look at him go. And clearly he's the only person that likes this song. probably have a sweep tonight. We'll be on Monday to talk about it. Enjoy the weekend.